So this is an individual rock wool cube. This is actually where we start all of our hydroponic crops, including our vine crops. So we'll drop the seed into the little hole at the top, and they'll normally live here for about two weeks. And in the case of the vine crops, then they're gonna get transplanted into a larger rock wool cube called the Delta Block. And they're gonna live here for probably two to three more weeks, depending on which crop and which season we're in. And then once you see the roots kind of coming out of the bottom, like this here, we've got good root development coming out of the bottom, then it's time to go ahead and put them into a system. So in this case, this vine crop is an eggplant, um, but we're gonna show you what the tomatoes look like. So then you're gonna set them on top just right on top of the grow spot right here uh, for what's called a rock wool slab. So again, it's all the same material, whether it's the, the cubes, the delta blocks, or the slab, it's all this, this stone wool, rock wool material. And in this case, it's gonna sit right on top of a gutter. That's all this is. It's just like a rain gutter, okay? Um, you could make your own, or you could buy a system uh, pre-made. All it's there to do is gather the water. So this slab, uh, is, sur is surrounded by plastic that helps to evenly distribute the water. And then we cut drainage holes through the bottom. So we irrigate our vine 30 minutes at a time. That's what these little drippers are. And it goes through the, the rock wool, the vine uptakes what it needs, and then the excess drains out of the bottom and is gathered by the gutter. The gutter takes it on down to the collection line, and the collection line takes it right back to the reservoir. So again, that is where these systems become very, very useful and efficient because they are not wasting any water at all. So this is the base of the tomato plant, okay? So this one's been established for a little while. I think I planted these in July, so you can see it's rooted in there very firm. So this is the base of your vine, right? That's the stem. So you can see we're using this lean and lower method so it develops this long kind of J shape, right? So as you come on up, you'll notice we've got a main stem, and then coming off of the stem, you've got leaves. Everything that develops in the bias, in this axis between the leaf and the stem, we call a sucker, okay? Um, these haven't been suckered in a while, so you can probably find some, some real nice ones up and down the vine uh, as I need to get onto it. This is a great example of one here. So here's your stem. So you've got your main stem, your main trunk, then you've got a leaf, and then you see this sprout developing in the, in the axis? That's a sucker. All the suckers need to go. Okay, so you need to do this once, maybe even twice a week. So all you're gonna do is remove it. We just pinch ours out. You can use pruners if you need to, if they get too big. But this is drawing energy away from the tomato plant. What we want is the tomatoes to grow straight. We need the leaves to, uh, to, to do their thing and the, and the fruit to do their thing. So we don't want these suckers drawing energy. So basically this system is all about steering energy towards producing more flowers and thus more tomatoes. So you're looking at our two different vine crops. We've got them both in the same area over here. This is the, the gutter and slab system that we just discussed. And these are our Dutch buckets, okay? They're both good for growing vine crops. Um, they're ideal for that. They're just a little bit different. The nuts and bolts are a little bit different, but they're very, very similar. The Dutch buckets you're gonna fill with a medium. We actually use pine bark now. We've done perlite. I've seen people use gravel the expanded shale, you can do anything you want to really. You just need some type of a medium for the roots to grab onto. We're using the pine bark now because we reuse it. It makes a great potting soil or you can use it in your garden, something to think about. But anyway, the irrigation system is, is identical to either system. And uh, we're gonna go talk more about that next. All right, so let's talk about the plumbing. So we're gonna be able to show you gutter and slab and Dutch bucket because we have them both kind of together in what we call the Franken system. <laughs> I actually kind of designed this myself and I'll explain. So anyway, at the bottom, this is our reservoir to start with. That's where the water lives. And that's where we're gonna adjust the pH and add the nutrients. You can see we have a very small, very rudimentary, just very basic pond pump, fountain pump that we're using to move the water. So the timer tells it when to kick on. Again, we irrigate four times a day. That's gonna vary area to area. You have to kind of play trial and error, okay? So the water gets pumped up through this line through what's called the feed line, okay? And each individual row has its own feed line. We have a ball valve so we can adjust the water pressure as needed or shut it off if we need to fix something, right? Through the feed line, you're gonna tee off using these little connectors 
and then we just run a drip tube, open-ended. Some people use emitters. Again, do what works for you. Trial and error. You're going to have to learn this stuff. Um, we do them open-ended, and that works great for us. So each individual vine has its one emitter, which is just a spaghetti line, right? Again, the water is going to pump through the, the reservoir and into the, the, the slab, and the excess gets collected by the gutter. Then this is the most important part line okay and you see we have this fitting there that feeds into the collection line that gathers up all the water and brings it right back to the reservoir so again there's no waste now one thing that makes this system unique it's gathered up and it goes to this snap lid tote and there's a sump pump inside of there that pumps it to the reservoir okay when this was designed uh i didn't know as much as i and if I did, I would have done this a little bit differently, and I probably would have hung these actually from the ceiling and elevated the height just a little bit so that we could eliminate this and eliminate a pump, okay? If we had had this up a little bit, we could just use grab, drain it right back into the reservoir and done away with this. Um, so I would recommend that, or, or just think about that when you're designing your plumbing system. Again, it, it, the systems work great. I've had it for years and it works fine, but it could have been a little simpler and easier if I'd known then what I know now. Because most growers are gonna have a reservoir that's isolated, like we talked about before, that's gonna feed their rows. Well, I took a look at this reservoir and I looked at it as wasted space, right? So I was like, why not grow something in that space? So we cover all of our reservoirs over with something to keep the sunlight out, Keep evaporation down well this in this case we just use marine gray plywood and i drilled holes and we were growing something right on top of it so this is a row of eggplants and bell peppers so that's just additional production that we've been able to add what would have otherwise been dead space so think like that think look at your little spaces and think what you can do with them and what opportunities you may have to grow additional value 